Hello, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg, and today we're going to have a look at a wonderful subject that really is a foundational subject to the entire kingdom of God. We are here as a program to reach out into lives, to trust God for wisdom so that we can live our lives successfully. Remember the Bible says that in all you're getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. Well, what is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to take the knowledge that we learn. See, all of us are gain, gaining information all the time. We've got downloads of information, whether it's on the internet, through news, through media, people talking to us. But then what we do is we sift it out till we got knowledge and then we understand that knowledge, usually people pursue knowledge in the area of their interests or their passions or their desires. And so we eventually get to this place where we know some things. But then we need to take that knowledge and apply it accurately. And when we put knowledge into accurate application, that's wisdom. Knowing what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and why we're doing it. And when you understand all of that, that's when you see success in your life. And the kingdom of God is designed by God for us to enjoy life. Remember Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, that the enemy, the thief, comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus said He came that we may have life and have that life more abundantly. And so the most important part of life, of course, is getting saved, getting born again. When you discover that you have an eternal life with God already established by Jesus, having paid the price for our sin, when we receive that, our sins are forgiven. We cleansed of unrighteousness. We are made the righteousness of God. And then we are established in the kingdom of God as a son of God, as a child of God. Now that we're born again, now that we're Christians, how are we to live this life? And God has already established His whole system. The entire creation has been designed to bring into your life what you need to be able to succeed in whatever God's called you to do. And so I want to have a look at the power of seed and harvest. Why is this such an important principle? Now, if you have a look at Mark chapter 4, verse 26, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if. Now, you'll notice as you study out the New Testament, particularly the, the Gospels where you see Jesus walking on the earth, as He went around, everywhere He went, you see two things happening. He taught the kingdom and He healed. He taught the kingdom and He healed. And so God was continuously restoring people to their former design that He created. God designed for each person to live and succeed. And then He taught the kingdom of God. And so Jesus came to bring redemption. He came to save us. While He was walking on the earth, He taught how the, God, how the kingdom of God works. And so whenever He says the kingdom of God is as if, He would use something that you're seeing around you in your everyday life, things of the natural, and then He would describe that thing in the natural, you see how that works? That's how the kingdom of God operates. Now, how would that thing work? Because God designed it that way. Because if the kingdom of God works a certain way, the way the kingdom of God is designed, the way the kingdom of God works, all of His creation. Remember, before even God said, light be, He already existed. There, there was a heaven. In that heaven, there are trees and rivers and, you know, everybody, the things that are there were, were, were in existence, the angels. And so there was a world already in existence. It worked and it functioned. And so when he said, light be, and he fashioned the earth, as he fashioned the earth, he spoke certain things into place. And as he did that, that thing was established to continue. And it was fashioned after the design of the original. And so when Jesus refers to certain things, the reason they're working that way is because that's how the kingdom of God works. And what we can do is take that information, glean from it, because if that's how the kingdom works and now the earth reflects it, then that's also how my life works and your life. And so when you know that and you understand it, you can use it in your life. Because so often when things go wrong, you notice when sometimes things go wrong, if, if something's small and little and you think, oh, I know how to fix that. If it's just a little thing broken or a little thing that didn't work, you've got to just reconnect it and it works again. 
But how often has something huge happened in your life? Something that might have been tragic or devastating or could be a very serious situation. And we try and solve it. And in that moment, we think we don't know what to do. And how often have we, we've all said it. We say like, I just don't know what to do. I've tried everything I know and I don't know what to do. And that's usually where our problems are because think about this theoretically. If you know what to do, then a problem is not a problem. <laughs> it may be an inconvenience. It showed up at the wrong time, but it's easy. You can quickly solve it and life goes on. The problems that we are struggling with and that we battle to solve, those are the ones that caused our biggest problems in life. And so if we know the answer and we know the solution, then we can move forward in a direction that will ensure that that thing is corrected so that we can continue with what God called us to do. So when we look at the kingdom of God, the whole kingdom of God is as if. Whenever Jesus said that, I want to focus in and say, what is he talking about? Because his kingdom works. Everything God does succeeds. Everything Jesus did worked and succeeded. And so now he's saying the kingdom of God is as if. Well, what did he say? The kingdom of God is as if a man scatters seed on the ground. And then he says he sleeps by night, he rises by day, the seed sprouts and grows. And he himself does not know how the earth yields crops by itself. First the blade, then the head, and after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens immediately, he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. And so here we see Jesus saying the kingdom of God works and functions like a man who sows seed and the end result is a harvest. Now, when we talk about a harvest, I know very often people think in financial terms, and I'm sure many of us are standing in faith for financial return. I know that there are things that I'm wanting to do in the kingdom of God. God's called us to do and to reach further and to go into more platforms and to, and to plant churches, build church buildings, and reach out and do outreaches. All of that requires a financial harvest, but it's going to take more than money just to do that. There's so many other areas that we need a harvest in as well. I need a harvest in terms of how I manage and how I lead the team. I need a harvest in how I'm a husband to my wife, a father to my children. I need a harvest in terms of relationships. And there's so many different areas, if you think about it, that we need answers for. We need guidance. We need insight. I need to be able to hear God's voice. I need to be able to pray accurately. And so all of those are harvests. Those are things that I need. So the moment I need something, the moment even if I needed this pen, if I didn't have the pen, that pen would be a harvest. When I get that, that's a return. I need to get this into my life. And so to get things into my life, to receive these harvests, you to receive a harvest, Jesus said, requires a seed. That makes sense in the natural. We know that a farmer, when he looks at an empty field, doesn't expect the field just to produce him a harvest of wheat, for example. He would have to sow a wheat seed in order to get that wheat harvest. So now Jesus is saying, if that works for a farmer, and a farmer gets that, now the whole kingdom works that way. Well, if we go back to Genesis chapter 1, it's very interesting. If you look right at the beginning, we know how God created the whole of the heavens and the earth. The Bible says in the beginning, the earth was without form and void. And then he started speaking. And as he spoke, light be what happened. There was light and he saw it was good. And so he goes through the progression on six days, creating everything, the earth, the animals in the earth, the plants, everything that functioned, the sun, the moon, all these different things. And then on the sixth day, God says in verse 26, Let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Verse 28, then God blessed them. So get a hold of this. Man's created. 
male and female, He's created them. And then the Bible says, now that they're in existence, He blesses them. And He says to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Now that is a huge instruction. There are two people, Adam and Eve, a man and woman, a man and his wife. They are now on the earth. They're the only two humans that exist on this planet. And God says to them, be fruitful and fill the earth. Fill the earth. Think about that. I mean, today, what, there's seven to eight billion people on the planet. And so now we're talking about this planet being full of people, but not only that, that it's constructed and it's working and it's operating. And God gives this instruction to two people. That is a huge instruction. How do you even begin doing it? Well, look at the very next verse. And God said, see, I've given you every herb that heals seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit heals seed, to you it shall be for food. Now, wait a moment. Look at that. God creates them, and He says to them, they must fill the earth, subdue it, and take dominion. And the very next verse, the very next statement is, look, there's your seed. Now, you could think, well, he's just talking about food here. But really, if you think about it, when he says, for you it shall be for food, you look at that original text there, we're talking about provision. Provision. For you it shall be for provision. Now, if you think about it, there are some seeds that I suppose you could eat. But how do you know that a seed, just seeds on its own, is not going to produce something really sustaining, it's not going to keep you healthy in the type of food that we need to eat. Well, I know for myself, uh, I need more than just a handful of seeds. If I'm active and I'm, and I'm working and I'm doing what needs to be done, you need some good, some good wholesome food. But you notice God didn't give them just the food. See, if God serves up a food, let's say I give you a plate of food, and you eat that plate of food when it's gone, you're going to look for more food in a few hours' time. And as long as I have to keep giving you food, I'm the one that's going to keep being busy and just that'll be my full-time job, just cooking you your next meal. And yeah, we see God saying, I don't need to give you food. I'm going to give you seed for food. Now, why would God do that? Because the, with a seed, you can determine what food you want. In other words, you decide the food that you want. You decide how much food you want. You decide how far in advance you want to prepare for your food. And so God is saying to them, I have literally given you everything you need. There's your earth. I've created you. I've blessed you. There's the empowerment, the blessing, the spoken word of God is what enables somebody. It's what blesses them. Now they are prepared and equipped to be able to prosper and succeed. And then... He gives them the tools they need, and that is the seed. And the moment He gives them the seed, they literally have everything they need for full provision. Have you noticed that when someone sows a seed, let's say we want to produce some tomatoes, then we get some tomato seed, we go and we plant the tomato seed, and that seed will grow. Now, did you notice that it wasn't God sending an angel to bring tomatoes to my house? Did you notice that when I planted the seed, God didn't have to get off His throne and come down and physically touch that seed to activate it? No, built into the seed is the full power. Every seed is already designed to grow. The moment that seed, it can lie on this table. If I had a seed now today, that seed would be lying on the table over here and it, it, it could lie there for years. And they, I've, I read once before that they found seeds in the tombs in Egypt, hundreds of years old, maybe even thousands of years old. They found a seed, and it was just lying there in the tomb. And then they would take that seed, hundreds of years old, and plant it, and it grew. 
Now, how is that possible? Because God designed that seed to do that. That seed is designed to grow, and it is in that state waiting. So the seed is produced, and it will wait and lie dormant until the time that it's activated. So when is it activated? The moment it is sown. Now here's the thing. Either it can be sown by nature, you know, when a, when a plant produces seed, the wind can blow, and take that seed somewhere and it'll just land somewhere and all of a sudden it'll start to grow. And as that seed starts to grow, it'll produce a plant after its own kind and then that new tree will produce seed again. The other way is I keep that seed and I keep it until such a time as I decide. Now is the time. I need to produce this harvest now. I need this particular fruit I will then go plant that seed on purpose. And as I plant it, I activate that future. That plant is just a matter of time before it grows up and it will become what it's designed to be. Now, if you go back to Mark chapter 4, and you will see here when Jesus said something very interesting, He said in verse 13, now we're going to have a look at this this week, He says, yeah, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? Now, when I read that, I saw, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the other parables? That makes this the key. If you don't get this, how are you going to understand anything else I teach you? So everything that Jesus teaches is based on the foundation of this parable. This, that makes this a vitally important parable. This is a key that opens up everything to the kingdom of God, because after describing this, he goes to, this is how the kingdom of God works. And then he says here, verse 14, the sower sows the word. What? Did you just, did you hear what Jesus said? The sower sows the word. Luke chapter 8, verse 11, Jesus in fact said, the word is, the word of God is seed. The seed is the word of God. So when God speaks, Jesus is saying, even that, the spoken word of God is seed. Hallelujah. Well, come back to Genesis chapter 1. How did this whole of creation come into existence? Look at verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Look at verse 2. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Verse 3. God said... Whoa, look at that. Just underline that. God said, let there be light. And what happened? There was light. What? Well, if God said, what's that called? The Word of God. And the Word of God is seed. The very establishment of creation, light be, was through a seed. Praise God, the whole kingdom works on seed and harvest. The moment a word is spoken, that thing goes into existence. And you can keep reading. You're all the way down. Verse 6, God said, and then God made, and then He called. And verse 9, God said, and God called, and God saw. And then verse 11, God said, and you keep going all the way down. Everything God put into existence was through seed. And the harvest was what he intended for it to produce. The light, the plants, the animals, all of that came out of his spoken word. And then he says, man in our image be. And he speaks out of his mouth. He breathes the life of God into this man. And man becomes a living being. And then he gives him seed and says, now use it, go fill the earth. Family of God, this is an exciting message. We're going to spend time this week having a look at how God has already established your future in you and He's given you the power of seed and harvest to produce that future in your life. I've got something to share with you. I'll see you right after this. When we honor Him and honor His presence and honor His life, 
and you trust God, expect Him to lead you, you will always prosper and you will be blessed. You will experience the fullness of God. Alan and Janine Bag invite you to join us for this powerful evening of celebrating the increased anointing. I received an email from the client's finance department, a notice of payment. I went for an interview and was told that I was considered perfect for this job. Somebody deposited money into my account with the reference as per the Lord. They would provide all the training that I need and company branded clothes. And to top it all off, a much higher salary than anything my husband and I had anticipated. More than 40,000 rand of medical bills written off and that I should not have to worry about any future bills. So many promotions, so many increases, so many blessings. He'll look after you, he'll prosper you, he'll multiply you, he'll increase you and cause greater finances to flow through your hands. Join us at the Bay Christian Family Church and be part of this opportunity to see the Lord's increased anointing manifest restoration. You can also participate through your seed by joining us online through any of these platforms. Don't miss out on this opportunity to experience restoration to His increase in Trust God for a multiplication and for increase because He wants to ensure that you can continue to put His kingdom first. For any info, please contact us here at Allen Bag Ministries. One of the most powerful principles or laws that God has made available to us is the principle of seed. When a seed is sown, it always grows. If the environment is right, it will grow. God designed it to do that. And the whole kingdom is based on that seed principle. In this series, Alan Bagg will teach you how to apply this powerful principle accurately in your life. God has put into our hands the power to produce in our lives whatever we desire. You will learn how to experience abundant harvests in all areas of your life and you will learn of the fullness of God's blessing as it works in and through you. You don't have to force anything. You're going to see things start to change in your life because whatever you want in your future, you put that seed in and it will produce that future for you. Get your series today and discover the power of seed Visit allenbagministries.org to purchase your series or contact us here at Allen Bag Ministries at any of these details. When a seed is sown, it always grows. If the environment is right, it will grow. God designed it to do that. And the whole kingdom is based on that seed principle. And so I really want to encourage you, get a hold of this because when you start thinking in the process of seed and harvest and, and you realize that all you need to do is just get the seed in. It's designed to grow. You don't have to force anything. You're going to see things start to change in your life because whatever you want in your future, you put that seed in and it will produce that future for you. And so it's very important to have you, if, if you're thinking in that direction, you'll see it all around you. And the way we change our thinking is by renewing our minds. The way we do that is by hearing the word on a continual basis. So make sure you get that. It's a two-part series. Of course, we also have it on a flash drive. You just plug that in your computer, get onto your phone or wherever you listen to it and listen to it over and over and over and over and over and over. And the more you hear it, the more you have faith for it. And so walk in the fullness of the power of seed and harvest. Now, my friend, the most important seed that was ever sown in all of existence, all of eternity, was Jesus Christ. You realize that God in the garden had lost his family. And as a result, he had one son and he took that only son and sowed him into the earth. And Jesus said, speaking about himself, unless a seed dies and sprouts and grows, it abides alone. And he was talking about his death and resurrection. And his death and resurrection was a seed so that God could reap a family and you part of that. And now that same harvest of being a family of God 
is available to whoever believes. And even there, the seed and harvest principle is put into place. The Bible says, if you believe with your heart that Jesus is raised from the dead and confess with your mouth that He's Lord and Savior. See, that's a sow and seed, the Word of God. As you speak it, you're born again. And so if you've never yet given your life to Jesus, do it now. Make that decision. He loves you. He gave His life for you. And He rose from the dead, showing that you're forgiven of your sin. Just receive it today. And so pray this prayer with me. Yeah, right now, while you're watching, say this with me. Dear Jesus, thank you. You died for me. You gave your life for me. And then you rose from the dead. Today you are alive. I believe that. I call you Lord. You are my Savior. Today I am born again a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. If you've just prayed that prayer, I've got something I'd like to send you. This is a card that's going to explain to you what's just happened or some guidelines now that you are a Christian. And this study program is going to give you some scriptures every day to read through. And as you read through them, by the end of the year, in a year's time, 365 days, you'll have read through your entire Bible from cover to cover. And this CD is my Christian passport out of this world of failure into his kingdom of victory. It's a scripture it's a CD packed full of scriptures that you can speak and confess along with me. And as you do, it builds and strengthens your faith. Now, that's my free gift to you. I want to sow that into your life. Just call us on that phone number or write us at that address. And as soon as we've got your details, we'll send that to you and I'll be with you shortly. Well, that's all we've got time for today. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Through the grace of God, Allen Bag Ministries help many to get through the challenges they face on a daily basis. And our heart is to help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org and let us help you identify and succeed in what the Lord has called you to do. This week's Wisdom for Life programs are available in digital format. So purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us at any of our details. Choose a